Okay. All right. Uh, welcome to Six Scale. It's May fifth, twenty twenty-two. <clears throat> uh, the design, uh, the the meeting notes are shared in the uh, in the chat. Okay. So today uh, we're going to talk about um, a few things uh, that we're seeing in performance right now. It's Qvert. Um, so we have the. Um, um, so, so Sanja, I don't know if you know this. So we have this, uh, we have this performance job um, that we run every a few times a day. And uh, basically, what it does is it um, it will run uh, and create 100 VMs, 100 VMIs. And what it does is it measures the amount of time it took uh, to for each. Um, or how, how long it took to go end to end from start to running. And we have some thresholds where we expect like, um, we expect um, a few things to come within, you know, a certain amount of time. It needs to start in a few amount, a uh, certain amount of time. We also have a bunch of thresholds around a few other metrics, like um, uh, like uh, HTTP requests, like things like create requests. Like if we do, um, like we expect a certain amount of like creates for a hundred VMIs, um, and we expect a certain amount of gets, patches, et cetera. So this, what this job does is it measures and makes sure that we're within the threshold. Um, so this is like an example. Um, so the thing that I wanted to talk about is that we're actually seeing this job fail as of 423. And what's interesting is there's, um, this has been debugged and there were, we're short memory on, uh, we're short, we're suddenly short some memory on these jobs. And this is a bit surprising um, because I'm not sure what happened. Uh, something changed on this date um, where all of a sudden now our, um, we need a lot more memory in order to um, to launch these 100 PMIs and actually measure, which is a little strange. And I did some investigation into Qvert and see what was wrong. And uh, from what I found, I mean, on, on the dates that this occurred around the 422, 423 date time frame. Um, I didn't see anything that looks particularly suspicious. So roughly uh, 12 days ago, this red around the date. Six, 11, 12 days ago or so, the 23rd. So around this time frame, something happened here. Either something, I think one of two things could happen. Either something changed in the in the CI, which suddenly like is something is hogging more memory, or we merged some code that is suddenly not as uh, or is taking suddenly taking up more memory. Um, and I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, it could be one of these here, but I'm not sure. So, so we don't. April twenty second. Okay. Yeah, something happened. I'm not sure. So what I think um, what uh, what we'll have to do at some point is we're gonna have to go through these PRs and, and audit them just to see because we actually have so we have two jobs. We have um, we have this one, this periodic job. We also have uh, a pre-submit job, but the pre-submit job is, is optional, and um, and so we have no way of actually knowing since people since someone may not have ran it when they did their um, when they did their PR, we have no way of knowing which one actually caused it to fail. So the periodic caught it. And um, so we're just kind of gonna have to play a guessing game and see if um, one of these in here suddenly caused a massive memory increase. And it's like a, a decent amount, like it's like a few gigabytes, like is kind of what we're seeing. So I don't know, we don't have to do that now, but like, Something, I think what I'm gonna do is as a follow-up, I'll create an issue and tag a bunch of these PRs and, and something for tracking to try and figure out which one of these, yeah, try to get an idea of which one of these actually caused this. All right. All right, so uh, we don't know the issue, well, so we don't know the answer to this, but something we'll figure out, I think, um, over time. Okay, so um, 
the next thing, this is um, this is something that's interesting. Um, so I, I um, uh, Sanji, Sanji, I, I don't know if you know, I work at NVIDIA. So we have, um, we run Qvert internally. And um, so I, I do a lot of experiments on scale and performance based on our clusters. And um, one of the things I've noticed, which is a little bizarre, as uh, so we, we go through, um, oh, I've got three graphs here. We, we go through uh, periods of, of churn when, uh, in, when in some of our um, data centers where we'll basically have a high virtual machine instance count. And all of a sudden um, we, we delete a few of them and uh, you know, we recreate them. So that would be churn, like we're you know, replacing, replacing running virtual machine instances. And during this period of time, um, you know, there's more pressure on the control plane. So things happen, things just kind of, I don't know, things just kind of um, take a little bit longer uh, naturally because you know, obviously more things are happening. And uh, so that's what this investigation was, is there's, there's um, we have a bunch of metrics and um, we have this period where uh, we have a little bit of churn um, and we see a few interesting things from the components. And so um, the original observation was that we I saw a high virtual machine put requests during a low low churn, and uh, so you can kind of see it here. This, um, this I have this this golds I mark them at golds, and you can see it. And this is from um, uh, from Prometheus, like this gold line. You can see that um, there's a regular cadence, and you have this very high amount of put requests that are returning 200 from the virtual controller. And during this time, there's, there's very few create requests. Um, and you can actually see that this is the corresponding um, graph um, in, in Grafana. And there's not that many um, DMs that are actually being created during this time. There are some, but not many. And um, it's a little strange that uh, we have this, we see so many pull requests from the virtual controller and that um, and that it's at a regular cadence. It's a little bizarre. And then you can see the other part of this is this is from the Vert API. Um, you can see that um, this matches up with uh, this period right here. This is when we have some turns. So we're creating a lot of VMs and we're deleting a lot of VMs during this time period. And all of a sudden we see a lot of the flurry of requests to the to the Vert API. And if we look over at the Vert controller, this purple line here represents put requests returning 409. 409 is a conflict. And so this, this is interesting because we're seeing high 409s, um, which is getting a lot of traffic in the API server, which kind of makes some sense. Like we're sending a lot of requests and there's some conflicts. Um, but we're, we're also seeing a reduction in the number of um, 200s uh, for put requests, like that gold line goes down, which I, I guess you could explain it as like where we're seeing, you know, fewer requests get through to be processed. Um, so it's kind of um, it's kind of interesting, but it's contributing to things being a little bit slower. Like we're we're doing a lot more things. So our like this is time on the on the y-axis here. It's taking longer for these um, for these VMs to actually get uh, get processed. So it's that's interesting. So there's there's two observations just to kind of summarize. Lots of 409s seem to have a positive correlation to slow scheduling times, which is interesting. And um, that the, the vert controller has these has this regular cadence where it has high amounts of put requests. And I don't know what it's doing, but um, it's, it's doing something. It's doing it at a regular cadence when there's not many um, VMI is being created or deleted, which is a little bizarre. I would expect, I guess the way I would say this is that I expect this gold line to be to be low. I expect it to be low and then kind of increase it like with this screen, with uh, kind of with this, I'd expect that these lines to follow this cadence that the uh, for API is doing. And it's not, it's got a completely different signature. Bell curve instead of the synchronous pattern thing. Yeah. Yeah, right. Because this, what this tells me is like, okay, we have some activity that's going on, and and it could be that, um, you know, maybe that this, like, there, yeah, we have like a, this would be a lot of activity, and here we see 
a lot of activity and not we see a little bit less activity. Now that could be by the, because of the four nines, um, but then we see like very little activity and we see um, we see a ton of activity from the work controller. It's, it's a little strange. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm, something I'm still gonna look into. I, this one, I, I'm still digging into find. I think, so my next step for this one is I'm gonna try and find what um, what could possibly be causing this to occur in a regular cadence. And it's not just the, the put requests that return 202. It's all these lines. I mean, every single one of these, like post 201s, get 200s, all from the VERT controller are fairly regular, fairly, a fairly regular cadence. And um, it's just strange that, just seems strange that that's what's going on. So I'll just have to do some more digging in the code, but I think I'm getting closer to, to actually getting an answer on this one. And so if, if kind of uh, to, to kind of go up a higher level here, one of the things that we want eventually, like I showed with the um, periodic uh, performance job is that like we want to see, we want to limit the amount of requests that we have because these all go to the API server and this affects our ability to scale in general. So being, so not being a noisy neighbor is important. So if we're doing this at a regular cadence and there's no reason for it, or you know, where maybe we have something we've leaked in the code and we need we definitely need to fix it. Okay. Um so that's all I had um for today. I, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else? I could also talk about tracing. I think that was a thing I had last time. I don't know if anyone's interested in tracing, but uh you want I can talk about that. There's some there's some folks in the community who are interested in in working on tracing. All right, I'll bring it up here. Um, so there's a so I'll do a brief discussion on this. So there's a with tracing right now. There's um one thing that's interesting for us uh, is like. So tracing has got a good, lot of good use cases, right? It's, um, you know, can tell us when there's slow code paths. It can identify, you know, when things are, um, you know, when certain things should be or, or misbehaving um, at a very small level. And so we can, and we can also, and the other part is we can also visualize it. Like there's a lot of um, good UI tools. Uh, so right now the Qvert support for tracing is it, it's very limited. It's actually, there's support in the VERT controller for doing tracing um, out to standard, to standard out. And it's very simply just on a few, it's on, it's, it's very simple library and it's just around a few hot code paths right now. Um, so the idea that, that I, we've discussed a little bit in the community is possibly having, um, expanding this. So not just to be something we print to standard out, but actually use something like open telemetry which is something that Kubernetes has actually done a lot of work around and um, a lot of work on integrating um, some of those solutions. Um, and there's sort of a few use cases for it. And so one of them is that being able to trace in, inside of ind individual components. And, and so, like I said before, like it's important we can see hot code paths within like the work controller, things that are taking a long time, be able to visualize those. And there's the second, a second use case, which is I think a lot more challenging, which is be tracing across components. That would be like if we sent the request to the Vert API, tracing it from the Vert API to the Vert controller, down to the Vert handler, down to the Vert launcher, and seeing you know all the paths it takes and how long it took in each of them. Um, it's it's difficult because these are separate components; they're different pods. Um, it would we have we basically have to find a way to uh, to pass the trace all the way through, but I mean it's not impossible. I think we just require a lot of um, a lot of work to get that to go to work. But um, that would be very cool to see. And then the uh, the third use case is really like I said, it's integrating with in the UI and Jaeger is one of them. There's a, there's a bunch of these. Um, so I I think um, one of the one of the goals was that at some point. Um, uh, I was hoping to do to come and put the design for this uh, once I have a little bit of time. So, but these are the three use cases that we'd like to cover. 
Okay. Any thoughts on that? I don't know if you guys have any experience with tracing, if you think that makes sense or not. Uh, no, sorry. Never really done much with tracing before. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't have any more topics. I mean, do you guys have anything you'd like to talk about? I think it's the first time I've seen um, you in the meeting. Is there anything that you want to hear about, um, you know, Qbert at scale and performance? Um, any interesting topics you want to explore? Uh I, I, <clears throat> hi, Ryan. Uh, I don't have a special topic. Uh, just okay. uh, have a question about the, uh, the API latency. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you, you said you you you, uh, you watched a lot of uh, API uh, API calls from the Kube con controller. So yeah. uh, I also noticed there are lots of inqueues happens in the controller and the handlers. Uh, but in, in in our case, uh, it is because the secret is deleted after the VM is boots up. So um, the secret controller always uh, monitor and watch the secrets if that one is ready. So if the secret controller failed the check, it will be in queue. So there are always um, tons of secret controller errors. Uh, in the log. So I'm wondering if that is relating to the lot of put and uh, uh, API calls. Oh, that's interesting. Um, oh, fans, you think this might be um, monitoring that secret? Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. That could be. Um, that's, oh yeah, that's, that'd be interesting to find out. Okay. That's a good theory. I think that's totally plausible. Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. We'll have to explore that then. That's um. Let's we'll see if we can. Yeah. Um. So this is uh. So all of the um. So this isn't just put. It's put get post. I mean, I guess it could be right. I mean, we're gonna be. I don't know what we would we be putting, but um. I guess. At least for the other ones, I, I think I could see um, I could see that being the case. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I guess like um, we'll have to um, yeah, we'll have to continue to explore that. I think that's yeah, that's I, probably the, the 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 most plausible theory that I've I've heard so far. I mean that it, that yeah, I guess I don't have one right now. I think it's <laughs> the best one I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I can. Uh, we can start. Uh, checking these parts of code to see if it really calls put. Uh, so if it is, that might be relating to this um, latency. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, I don't have any more topics, guys. I, you know, thanks very much for joining. And uh, and uh, so we meet. Um, I, I don't know if both you know. So we meet weekly at this time. Um, so we'll, we'll continue, uh, I think, uh, we'll see if we can find out what this is. And then hopefully by next meeting, um, get a little bit more information about um, this performance test to get a sense of you know, what's going on. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.